medicines and all kinds of toxic substances. And if these descriptions are read by human beings who imprint everything into themselves and imagine bad things in relation to them and believe them, then they actually become ill with the symptoms described. So, just through the might of the thoughts and their feelings, undesired side effects of medicines are invoked which then corresponds to an Nesbo effect. Nesbo preparations can nearly evoke the most impossible effects, whereby not only pain, nausea, and dizziness, and so forth, can be the results, but also confusion, headaches, forgetfulness, constipation, diarrhea, nosebleeds and fatigue, as well as poor eyesight, and so forth. Contrasting with that, the placebo effect also functions to the same degree, when things which appear to be medications, and so forth, are thought to be good, positive and promoting of good health. Belief, imaginations and delusions have a monstrous might over the human being. And if the human really believes that he is ruined by a certain situation, then that will actually also happen, because whoever believes, hopelessly loses himself in a delusion from which he can barely, or not at all, free himself any longer, as is also the case with religious and sectarian belief in God. Especially human beings who have a deep religious or sectarian belief, as well as those who are anxious and plagued by worries, are susceptible to the Nesbo effect. Religious and sectarian belief, as delusion, epitomizes a quite especially mighty Nesbo preparation. Accordingly, the world of thoughts and world of feelings are directed such that everything happens as is assumed in the delusional belief. If the human being is observed then one can determine that he is very strongly dependent upon optimism and pessimism and is therefore able to be influenced in relation to this. But optimism and pessimism are factors which also are expressed by means of the psyche, consequently, placebo effects lead to positive liberations from burdens, while nesbo effects evoke reactions which burden the psyche. Therefore it is also the case that a placebo or nesbo effect can be evoked by the environment, the family, colleagues, parents and siblings, relatives, friends, acquaintances, doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists and also completely unknown persons. And this can happen without it being noticed by the human being who is impaired, or who profits, therefrom. But in order for something negative or positive to happen as a result of an asbo or placebo effect, the most important tool is the might of the brain, respectively, the might of the thoughts and feelings which originate from it. The might of thoughts and feelings is the best pharmacy of life, or the deadliest poison for the destruction of life. In the body of the human being, the thoughts and feelings are capable of setting the most diverse biological processes in motion, such as, for example, also the activation, or blocking, of the distribution of positive or negative neurotransmitters. Therefore the brain is capable of producing highly effective substances of a positive or negative kind, which are far superior to any pharmaceutical preparation or toxic substance. Consequently the brain can stimulate valuable processes which promote health, or evoke processes which destroy the organism and life. The entire production of hormones is directly or indirectly steered by the brain, exactly as is the control of all bodily functions, the efficacy of the immune, and pain, systems, and the readiness for action, and so forth. The thoughts, and their feelings, of one's internal attitude, have therefore a very great influence on the efficacy of medicines, toxic substances, as well as of therapies, and so forth, and these decide the individual course of effects in regard to placebo and nesbo effects, so, therefore, ultimately over life and death. Thoughts, and their feelings, when they are observed in their origin, are truly only a mixture of chemicals and electrical circuits in the brain. These constantly evolve anew and change. So it also comes about that every region of the brain, which is associated with healing through thoughts and feelings, is correspondingly stimulated, as is the case with the dormant self-destruct mechanism which lies in wait for a suitable opportunity. Therefore it is also possible that negative, dark thoughts and feelings can kill a human being. Angst, delusional imaginings, belief, 
Fear of death, hopelessness and panic unavoidably destroy the sensitive equilibrium of the human psyche and body, because they make everything ill. Those human expectations, which stem from good and bad thoughts and their feelings, have an incredible might and form reality according to the nature of the thoughts and their feelings. The fundamental factor, which ultimately arranges everything, is the psyche, formed by the thoughts and feelings, the negative effects of which can actually kill the human being. Just as every biological death has its certain reasons, so indeed does death resulting from an ASBO effect also have its reason. With the human, angst, panic and thoughts and feelings, as an ASBO effect in regard to a danger, attack the immune system, respectively the body's protective shield. If angst and panic come about then the control center in the brain switches and sends its own defense mechanism into the blood. The adrenaline level thereby increases tenfold and the immune system is stimulated into full performance. However, if this state is maintained for too long, if the negative expectations and the panic remain active for too long then the burden becomes too great and the system becomes full of holes. It thereby becomes possible that bacteria, harmful substances and viruses break through into the body's own immune system and thus leave the organism helplessly at the mercy of the attackers. The Nusbo effect is not only able to cause illnesses, rather it also measurably causes and worsens pain, so everything seems much worse than it really is. The Nusbo's pain code is a neurotransmitter with the name CCK, respectively. Cholecystokinine. This is formed in the intestines as a result of angst and panic, and causes a pain reaction in the brain. This process can, that is to say, could, only be stopped by the neurotransmitter dopamine, but, as a rule, that is not possible when negative and bad expectations, and so forth, block the production of these protective transmitters. Consequently, angst becomes sheer pain. The Nusbo effect applies not only to individual human beings, rather larger groups of human beings can also be affected by it, as for example, in regard to mass hysteria. These phenomena, whereby the Nusbo effect causes an epidemic, occur again and again, and indeed especially where human beings gather in larger groups. As a rule, such Nusbo epidemics emerge especially often in offices spaces, in factories, as well as in schools, or at events where, indeed, many human beings meet together and are somehow isolated as a group. The Nusbo symptoms are thereby extremely varied and range from allergies, nausea, cases of dizziness and fainting, from abdominal pains, stomach cramps, behavioral changes and headaches, right up to hallucinations and actual delusions. That is also demonstrated with alleged UFO sightings, whereby smaller or larger groups of human beings succumb to a form of imagination based on visions and CUFOS although none are there, and this is only because one single person believes to have seen something and thereby causes an Nusbo effect. As a rule, the Nusbo symptoms begin without apparent reason, with one single human being, however they take effect, as a result of imagination, with others and evoke in accordance with the domino effect an epidemic, because ever more human beings succumb, indeed, in rapid succession, to the undertow of the Nusbo effect. If symptoms of illness are evoked through the Nusbo effect then no pathogen at all can be localized, because there simply is no pathogen. Nevertheless, Nusbos are infectious, under special circumstances, specifically as a result of imagination and belief. By this means, of imagination and belief, entire masses of human beings can, avalanche-like, be infected. Consequently, on the earth every tenth influenza epidemic also leads back to an Asbo effect because these symptoms are, in this way, also really very infectious. In order to understand that it must be comprehended that the human body, and, with it, naturally, especially the brain, is a biochemical pharmacy, and that, from the brain and its consciousness, thoughts arise, which create specific feelings. The entire thing thereby rests on the most varied biological processes which are set in motion, and to which not only healing factors belong, 
rather also the dangerous self-destruct mechanism which, if not strongly and consciously kept under control, can produce a deadly effect. Thoughts, and the feeling, 